Welcome back to the channel. Have you ever heard of the Microsoft Graph API and the cool stuff you can do combined with Power Automate? Today, we're gonna to take a look on how to use the Microsoft Graph API to create private channels in Power Automate. Since this is not supported yet from Power Automate itself, we have to use tools like Microsoft Graph API. And for, to do that, we will need to bring also Azure AD in the play. Stay tuned, give the thumbs up if you like the video and uh, make sure to subscribe. So today is going to be a little bit more complicated because we cannot just create an HTTP request in Power Automate to do the creation of our private channels. We have to create a so-called application in Azure so that the application can authenticate the Power Automate flow and to create the private channel on our name. Since when you create the private channel in Graph API, you have to authenticate. The same thing has to happen every time the flow runs. And to be able to do that automatically, we have to create an application in our Azure tenant. So let's take a look on that. So first, go to portal.azure.com and log in with your credentials, of course. You have to be an admin to do this. So in my case, I am. So if you select here the burger icon on the left-hand side of your screen, which is very tiny, let's zoom in a little bit. So as you can see here, it says Azure Active Directory. Select that. And next, you want to go to App Registrations. Select new registration, give it a name. Well, let's call it uh, Power Automate App and leave the rest as it is and select register. Okay, so now we have created our app, but we are still not done yet. First, we have to give Graph API the permission it needs so that it can communicate with this application. Select API permissions. As you can see here, we have use and read for the Microsoft Graph. We have to leave another, some uh, more. Add, select Add Permission, select Microsoft Graph, select Application Permissions, write Domain, read all and read write all, add permissions. We need to add a couple more, so make sure we go back to the Application Permission for the Graph API, select Group, Group read write all, select user, and user read write all as well. Add permissions. Now I should have here one, two, three, four, five permissions. I don't know if you need every, all of them for your case. Um, I, as an admin, I would make sure that the, these permissions are in so that the flow always works but this is a variable based on your individual case. Next, which is very important, is you have to grant admin consent, otherwise this won't work. Select yes. So before we move to Power Automate, we need to create one more thing, which is a, sec a secret. Make sure to select certificates and secrets on the left-hand side and create a new client secret. You can select the, this, uh, the expire date. Uh, I, will, I will make never, but because I will delete it afterwards anyways, and give it a description, which is uh, in my case, Power Automate, Power Automate Secret, select Add. Now you make sure you copy the secret and paste it in a notepad. So create a notepad, which is first secret, Write it, paste it in there. And then we need also in the overview section of your newly created app, the application ID and the directory ID, which is our tenant ID. Okay, now that we have all the three identification numbers that we need, we can go to Power Automate and start creating our flow. So select new flow. And let's make it an instant cloud flow so that the user can manually trigger it. Give it a name. Let's call it private channel creator. Cannot think of a better name now. Select create. 
Okay, so now when we create a private channel, we need to put it in a team, right? You, so you cannot create a channel just without a team. So first we have to create a team. Select new step, create team, create a team. So the name of the team has to come from the user, right? And the description as well. So we can put those inputs into the manual trigger input. Select that and select add an input. So we need one for text and another one for text as well. The first one will be the team name. The second one will be the team description. And now we can use these inputs in our created team action. Select the empty box there and search for team name, the input we just created. Do the same for the description. And now we have our inputs in our action. Next, we want to get that team so that we have the information we need. Select get team, get a team, and that team ID is a custom value and will be the create a team ID that was created on our action before. So select that, so now we have that dynamic. Next, we want to compose the JSON body that comes from that get a team action. This is an HTTP request to Teams. So it is doing a request and receiving a response. So we need that response. Select new step, search for compose, which is a data operation action. And the input, we need to put the body of that get a team response. Select save, and we have to test this because in our next step, we need to parse this JSON. And to do so, we need the body structure. We will see that in a second. Select test, manual, test, continue. It, of course, asks for the team name and description. Let's do this um, test one, test one. Select run flow. This is also a good test to see that our flow is working. So as you can see, all is green. And here in the compose section, we have the outputs. So this is the output structure that we are receiving with our JSON body. If you select the show row output, you will see it here on the right hand side. So this one is the structure. So make sure that you copy this JSON structure because we are going to need it in our next step. Select edit. The next step is called pass JSON. The content is the output of our compose action. And the schema, this is the why we run the flow, because we need to generate the schema from a sample. And the sample is where you paste the JSON response. We copied from the previous action. Select done. And as you can see, it deleted all the data that it has inside and it put the values and the types. So instead of saying it's like as having like an actual value inside, it's just saying it's string or boolean or so on. So this is for the, the structure. Next, we need to initialize a couple of variables. Select new, initialize variable. The first variable that we need to initialize is the secret that we created in our Azure tenant. So let's give it a name and call it variable secret. The type will be a string and the value we have to copy it from our WordPad or Notepad in my case. Paste it in there. Next we want to initialize the application ID and the directory ID. Let's go select initialize variable. The name is the tenant ID, it's called var again, would be a string as well, and the value is that one. Select new step, search for initialize, give it a name, this time it's var client ID, type is string again, and the value 
is that one from our client ID. Okay, so these three variables we'll need for the authentication. So that Power Automate can go to Graph API, authenticate using the app in our Azure ID, and then bring us back the data. We also need to initialize another value, which is the team ID. So select new step, initialize a variable, and this will be our team ID, which is a string, and the value will come from here, team ID from get a team. Okay, so let's rename this real quick. Secret, this was tenant ID. And this was client ID. And this is team ID. Next, we want to set a variable with a URI with the, from the Graph API. And inside, it has to have that dynamic team ID that will come each time the flow runs. So select new step, search for set variable. The name will be our team ID and the value will come from the Graph API. So for that, we have to go to the Graph Explorer. So it is dev.microsoft.com graph graph explorer. And as you can see here, you have a lot of uh, actions that you can do. In our case, we're using Microsoft Teams. If you see here, the create a channel HTTP requests, if you select that on the top right hand side of your screen, you can see here the URI that we use when you do that post request. So let's copy that and go back to our flow, paste it in there. And in where it says team ID, we need to put the team ID variable that we just created, right? Next, we'll have to do then the HTTP request. So select new step, search for HTTP request. Here it is, so it says HTTP. It's a premium function, so you have to keep that in mind. And as you can see here, we have to do some editing. So the method can remains a post request. So that's, that's correct. The URI is the URI that we initialize in our variable. So select that. We don't need to put any headers and queries for the body. We can get that from the Microsoft Graph API documentation. So I will make sure that uh, to link this documentation in the video description. And as you can see here, where it says channel, create a channel, we have this section where you can create, create a private channel. This is the post request, so the graph API, um, and this is the body that is requested. So let's copy that, go back to Power Automate and paste it inside. So for some reason, when I use this uh, from the documentation, it doesn't work for me. So the solution I found is that I have to put here a double at icon. I don't know why it's, it's, it doesn't work without that. And so I need to get my user ID. For that, we can go to the Graph Explorer. And one of the first sections, it says getting started. You can select, do a get request to, for, my, for your profile. And as you can see here, the, the response, we can see the, the ID of my user account. So let's copy that, go back to flow and paste it into this section where it says user ID. Next, we have to take care of the authentication. So select the advanced options and where it says authentication, instead of none, select the Active Directory authentication. This will open and some other options that will seem familiar to you now. So the tenant is our directory ID. As you can see here, it says directory in parenthesis tenant ID. So let's select directory ID. The audience is our graph API. So select this graphpi.com and paste it into the audience section. The client ID is our app ID. As you can see here, client is app ID. And the credential type has to be secret, not a certificate. So select secret if it's not already selected and in the secret section, put the variable secret that you initialize. Okay, I think that's it for now. 
Let's select save and see if it works. Let's test it. Select test manually. Select test. So it will ask you for the team name. Let's name it Contoso. Number two. In the description, let's paste that in there as well. Select run flow. And it looks like it run perfectly. So you scroll down, you can see here the body response. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope you liked it and uh, I think it's pretty helpful uh, as long as Microsoft does not support uh, creation of private channels in Power Automate yet. As soon as that comes out, this will not be necessary since it's also way too complicated um, th than it should be. Make sure that you like the video if you did so, um, subscribe to the channel and uh, catch you on the next one.